So you want to be part of Ryzen 3000, but you're not quite sure where to start? I think I got you covered. Welcome guys, Juan from Blueprint PC here. So today we're going to talk about the Ryzen 5 3400G and why you should buy this one, not the 3200G or the 2400G. So stick around and let's get into it. Alright guys, so keeping it current with Ryzen 3000, we're talking about the 3200G versus this puppy, the 3400G. So, the advantage of the 3200G over this is mostly one area. It's cost. The 3200G is only 100 bucks, where this is 150 bucks. But for that extra 50 bucks, you're getting four additional threads, higher boost clocks, three more cores on the GPU, and you're getting a better cooler. Now, mind you, the one that comes with the 3200G is sufficient. It will do the job. But instead of getting the Stealth with the 3200, you're getting the Wraith Spire with this puppy for 150 bucks again. So overall, my personal opinion, obviously go with this one if you can afford it. If your budget only permits a 3200G, then God bless you, do it. Go and do what you got to do. But if you can save a little bit longer, get this. You won't regret the added advantage this will provide versus just a 3200G. 3200G is essentially, as soon as you build your system, you, kn you know when you build it, you're going to have to upgrade in the near future. This will give you a little bit more leeway, a little bit better frame rates, and just better graphic settings overall within you're going to game with. So let's go ahead. Let's open this puppy up. Let's see what's inside, and let's dig deeper into the features. All right, guys, so let's open this puppy up. And with most of my unboxings, I honestly try to be as original as possible. So this, you can see, it's all sealed, whatever, cut it open for the first time. If you really want to see it, my crappy little knife that I have here, couldn't find my better one. So I pretty much know what to expect. I have other Ryzen processors. They all pretty much come with the same stuff. So I kind of know what to expect here, but let's go ahead and open it up. Who knows, maybe there'll be a surprise. Yay, the Certificate of Authenticity, which really doesn't mean much because it's not like a special edition or anything. All right, so open this puppy up. Here's our cooler. The processor just fell over inside the box. This is the Wraith Spire. As you previously mentioned, like I said, the Stealth comes with the 3200G. Uh, I'm not 110% sure what the difference is. I think the Stealth is a little bit shorter uh, for the heatsink itself. Outside of that, it does come uh, pre-applied with some thermal paste there, so be careful. I made the mistake before of doing this and then grabbing it and then doing that, and yeah, that was stupid of me, but I've done that. So be warned, it's pre-applied. So here's a little fan connector. Uh, I think these are like a 80 or 90 millimeter fan on these. They overall work pretty good. I will do another video showing how to install those for those of you who don't know how to or just nervous about it. But outside of that, that's pretty clean cut, dry and simple as most of this whole process will be. And then you'll see there's a little sleeve in here with the processor itself and it comes with a sticker so you can you know badge your system up and represent the AMD. Outside of that, it looks like a standard normal Ryzen processor uh, from the get-go. Nothing new because they all fit in the M4 socket. So it goes all the way back to that. So, all right, so again, not a lot to see here. It's pretty quick and simple. So the biggest thing though we want to talk about is what's different about this and why you should get it. So like I said, this has higher base clocks than the 3200G. This has a 3.7 gigahertz base clock. Uh, it's 4.2 gigahertz boost clock. This does have a 65 watt TDP. So again, like I said, that cooler itself is plenty to go ahead and take care of these. Even if with some mild overclocks, you should be all right. So if you are thinking about overclocking it, uh, you should be able to do so with the in the box cooler to a point. Everything's to a point. Don't go crazy. You're not gonna have limitless overclocking headroom, but you'll be able to overclock it a little bit. That's not gonna go back in right now. So the unboxing doesn't like me, but so, okay. So again, 65 watt TDP, it is, uh, it does support dual channel memory. It also, this is kind of where it becomes, is it really 3000 or is it not? Cause this is still on the 12 uh, nanometer Zen plus architecture, but everything's been upgraded for Ryzen 3000. So you're still kind of getting a Zen plus and that's where, you know, it breaks into, you know, 
this versus 2400G, because this essentially is just an upgraded 2400G with a few changes. Um, again, this is Vega 11, so it's 11 cores, and it's a 1400 megahertz uh, GPU clock, which is pretty good considering it's built in the processor. Um, again, this is entry level. The 3200G, 3400G, 2400, 2200, all those are an entry level processor essentially. They're not built to be an almighty workstation or go crazy or you know just game on the highest possible things with a 2080 Ti. It's just not the case, but overall they're pretty great for what they are. So I wanna go over a couple stats here with this one. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna compare this to a 2400G. I have everything saved here because I wanna give you accurate numbers. So per user benchmarks, this overall versus a 2400G and that's where that's gonna be your closest comparison. 2400Gs right now are going, you know, I think I've seen them as low as 120 bucks, but typically they're around of 129 ish. So, and like I said, these can sometimes be found for 140 bucks, and I spent 150 on it like the week prior, which still irks me. But so you're talking within a $20 range of price, and well, so you save 20 bucks and spend on something else, or do you spend on this? Well, here's why you spend on this. Overall, 16% effective speed boost for this versus 2400G. The uh, gaming side of this is supposed to be 10% faster at gaming. This is all per user benchmarks where they've you know ranked them accordingly. 8% faster on desktop operation, which is basically you know going through doing your normal day-to-day -day basic stuff, nothing crazy, you no know, web browsing things of that nature. And 5% faster on workstation, which is, you know, we're like editing videos and things like that, which I'm actually, once I get this built into a rig, which I will be doing, I will be putting this in a system and building it. We'll get more into that, more into that later. But I'm going to try and edit videos on this. So we'll see. I'll see how long it takes, see if it's even possible or if it's just like, hey, yes, it can do it, but it's not worth it. So we're going to find out. We're going to go deep into it and we're going to see what it can do. I'm going to overclock this thing and... We're gonna see what we can really get out of this processor versus previous gen and things like that. So outside of that too, what I've seen for game benchmarks, again, that 20 bucks you're spending, so you're getting faster overall operation. And depending on the game, you know, but equivalent games, equivalent settings, you're gonna see anywhere from five to eight more frames per second with this. And I know you think, well, that's not that much, whatever. But if that five to eight frames, like Assassin's Creed Odyssey is 22 frames versus 30 frames, one's playable one's like what's going on so i think you know again it really depends on the use case some games you'll, you may even see a bigger jump but five to eight frames i think is worth 20 bucks so outside of that guys if you already have a 24g don't buy this as an upgrade just don't that to me is not worth the new, the additional cost at that point in time the 150 bucks go buy yourself a amd rx 570 or if you can find a 580 for that price range or something in the used market. Go buy a GPU that's stronger at that point in time. And even then, you can probably find, you can get a Ryzen 1600 for 80 bucks at Micro Center and then save a little bit extra cash and get a better graphics card. So, and I think that's a better combo, which I do have a build on that. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, it's not 150 bucks for the two, but it's still a good combo. So all right, guys, well, if you are in the market for a new processor and you are in a tight budget, I hope this helped you out a little bit. Outside of that, please hit that like and subscribe button. And uh, again, stick around. I got a bill coming up with this thing and we got another case and new motherboards and all this other fun stuff we're gonna go over. So, catch you guys in the next one.